D and D module. It was one of the first ones that we did. So that's probably you know, the reason that I like it personally. That was one of the first ones that we saw built with the tools and get into the game. And we were like, yeah, okay, this is this is working. This is this is coming through uh, coming through fine. And this is this is really fun. Um, so it's a uh, you know, I don't I don't know that it's. Uh, 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 I don't know that it's something that everybody is going to be as attached to as me. It might, there might be a little bit of nostalgia involved in that one. Oh, I understand. Um, and on the on the angle of nostalgia, one of the things that I was curious about is that this is definitely a Forgotten Realms game, and it's taking place in Neverwinter. But on, on the lighter side of Dungeons & Dragons culture, which has decades of uh, jokes and in-stuff to build on, I was wondering how much humor from the Dungeons & Dragons community itself you're thinking of inserting into the game. Because I believe I mentioned, or at least, well, I mean, I saw someone mention during one of the open beta weekends that uh, maybe jokes like the head of Vecna might be included somewhere. <laughs> or uh, uh, I, yeah. I, I'm half wondering if you're going to like actually include the gazebo from the gazebo joke. Yeah, I so uh, we... Uh... We have constantly been compiling lists of uh, of, of those kinds of items and and uh, and nods that we want to that we want to put in. Um, it's uh, you always have to strike a, an interesting balance, right? Because you, yes. you uh, uh, there is so much lore and there's so much history. <laughs> that the game itself, you know, it needs to take itself seriously. It, it's 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 part of the the actual history of Forgotten Realms. Um, but there's, uh, I think we have quite a few nods and winks in there um, to players, even you know from from uh, uh, from way back. I the one that I always bring up is uh, for me personally when we started building stuff, when we started making items, I was like, okay, well I don't, you know, I I don't care what systems we design, I don't care what what uh, what we come up with, or I mean, I definitely care. I don't. Mm. Uh, Regardless of what systems we design or right. come up with, we have to find a use for the ten foot pole, right? Yeah. That ten foot pole has to be in the game. That's just all there is to it. Um, and so there's, we we definitely have uh, stuff like that, and you know, I certainly don't want to detail all of them, but right. Uh, there's a there's a good there's a good little pile of items like that that give good nods to some of the traditional jokes. Unfortunately, Vecna, I Vecna's not Forgotten Realms. Oh, that's kills true. Me. It, it kills me because it's so good, but it's not. It's not actually Forgotten Realms. That's true. It makes me so sad. <laughs> um, I do actually. I do re- remember running into the ten foot pole. Isn't that an item that briefly gives you the adventurer skill? Yeah, yeah, it uh, it does, and I think it. Uh, I don't think this made it to a finished version because it, it didn't. Uh, it didn't quite feel right mm. uh, when we did it, but uh, uh, it. Um, <laughs> it at one point when you used it, it went from a ten foot pole and it would break and become a nine and a half foot pole. And the, the I think the description of it was, well, this is obviously totally useless. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, but that didn't quite uh, didn't quite make it to the final version. So you obviously have some ideas for including uh, humor and et cetera in the narrative. Um, I've I've only seen a very small part of the game, and I've noticed that. Um, when I came back to do the controller wizard, that there was a whole new introduction, like you crashed on the shore and had to you know, trudge through undead, and there was a lot of like movie style narrative scripting to moving me through uh, the the mission, and I was running into people whose well whose name I rapidly forgot, I'm afraid. Uh, I'm wondering, are do you plan on having? characters who will recur who have like you know very very bright or or even flamboyant attitudes or personalities that we can latch on to oh sure um i think one of the people that you saw there was uh was makos who is uh uh the the tiefling who's in our our trailers and who shows up there over the um over the bones of a particular creature which i don't want to spoil oh yeah for anybody who hasn't gone through the yeah. uh the tutorial yet um but we have uh if you look at the trailer that we've that produced the the cgi trailer um uh the most of the characters in that trailer are our actual characters have names they're in the game and in, in various places um they have little backstories that we've created we've used them uh from the beginning as kind of uh ways for us to show sort of typical adventuring parties and things like that um and so you know 
some of those are added to the lore by us. Uh, a lot of our characters come from the lore itself. Uh, you know, we we want to make sure that there is uh, that there's tons of stuff in the game that that just uh, comes straight out of existing lore. There's so much history there. You know, we don't we don't really need to remake everything. Um, so it's uh, it you know hopefully those guys will come through and you'll you'll see them periodically and uh, sort of kind of know the backstories of them and. Uh, you know, Knox is pretty pivotal in our in our stories. He's the uh, guy with the big battle axe and the patch on his eye. Um, so you definitely will interact with him uh, fairly regularly. Um, and uh, uh, yeah. So you're the lead designer. Uh huh. I'm wondering, as lead designer, so far, what has been one of your favorite parts of bringing Neverwinter to bear, as sort of a conclusion? Um, that's always such a hard question to answer. It's, <laughs> I, I mean, there's I'm, so many components. It, it there there is, and and uh, and all of them are are super fun, and that's you know, I just uh, basically I'm just as lucky as can be. You know, I get to, uh, I I think my favorite. Uh, my favorite thing, uh, and this it, it sounds a little sappy every time I, I, I talk about this, but, um, but it's true. My favorite thing is that I get to relive and I get to bring to life a, a game that will help people relive you know, all those hours that I spent in my friends' parents' basements growing up, playing D&D, telling our versions of stories, you know, whatever campaign modules we're playing, and then whatever home, crazy homebrew stuff that we cooked up. Uh, and, uh, you know, now I do that. It's, it's my job. I'm getting paid to do that. It's, <laughs> it's fantastic. I couldn't be luckier, right? So uh, does it, that mean that you have a box full of various types of dice somewhere? I, well, it's not a, it's not a box. It's a bag. <laughs> but, of course, it's just, it's on my, uh, it's on my shelf right next to my bed. I, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm a pretty big, um, pretty big RPG nerd. Uh, I mean, I actually worked uh, in the pen and paper industry for, for eight years before I moved over to computer games. And, um, so I worked for Pinnacle Entertainment on Deadlands. And, uh, so it's, uh, you know, that, that industry, those games are very, very, very near and dear to me. And, uh, you know, I've played them for as long as I can remember. And so, you know, being able to move into doing it professionally and, and then being able to work on, work on Neverwinter as a, uh, uh, as an MMO is um, that's just super exciting. It's, well, I, 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 that's just totally brilliant. In fact, um, I'm wondering just for a moment. I I know that there's n- that in a way, video games don't really replace at all the experience of sitting around a table with the dice and the pencils and you know shouting and throwing food or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but how uh, how much of that? Uh, experience does translate through the screen, especially when you get to set up and watch the scene happen and be in it. Uh, especially because now we're looking at Neverwinter, you know, the MMO, which of course, ever anyone who's played Neverwinter, the the solo the solo game, and particularly enjoyed it. What parts of of that experience do you feel uh, is re- retained or at least uh, elevated by being turned into? a massively multiplayer game. Well, it's especially with, um, with the advent of, 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 uh, a voice like, uh, with, uh, Skype or, or, uh, we have, uh, supported voice control right in, right in the game or I'm sorry, not voice control, uh, voice chat, yeah. <laughs> um, right, right in the game. Um, a lot more of those elements are present now than they, than they were, you know, five years ago. Um, the chatter, like when we do, when we test internally or when we test with our headsets over, over our internal voice chat, um, the chatter back and forth when you, once you're grouped up and doing a dungeon or a skirmish or something that requires more than one person is strikingly similar to what it was, <laughs> you know, when you're sitting at a table, uh, you know, uh, flinging Cheetos at each other. Uh, so you just have to kind of find, um, you find virtual, uh, virtual versions of flinging Cheetos, uh, which are usually dance emotes. <laughs> I right. Uh, but uh, but the chatter is really similar, and it it's um, it's pretty awesome how many times uh, it brings me right back to those 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 feelings and those those moments. It's um, so I, I 
I'd say actually nowadays it's pretty it's it's getting pretty similar. It's not uh you know, it definitely isn't the same thing. Uh and uh you know, you can't uh you don't have a a DM sitting right there that can react exactly to what's going on in the party composition or the party makeup mm -hmm. and uh, you know, hand tweak things just for your particular run through. Um, I, you know, that's that's something that uh, that I don't think we're ever going to be able to replicate. Really, um, you know, we've since we have the foundry now, you can have whatever flavor of of mission you want, or that your um, that the uh, that the storyteller of your group would want to bring through. So we're getting closer. You know, we've got that element in there, um, but. Uh, uh, finding a way to replicate that very that hand tweaked experience that you get when you're all sitting at the same table, not not quite there, but the chatter's getting there. Yes, absolutely. The, the laughter, the laughter's getting there. So, um, well, so, uh, yeah. excellent. Thank you so much. That's that's about all the time I have uh, for this. But I wanted to thank you so much for coming along and talking about Neverwinter, and especially my you know, expected favorite part of what's going to come out, the Foundry. Yeah. Yeah, I can't wait to see what you do with it.